everyone, in this video you will be learning how to implement multimodal sentiment analysis in PyTorch on Google Colab and I'm gonna give you step by step explanation. Recently I have received many emails asking about how to use multimodal signals. So I have prepared step by step explanation of implementing multimodal sentiment analysis in PyTorch. The code can be directly run on Google Colab without any installation and the link is down below this video. I have extracted both facial expressions and speech features in aumfccs.pkl file and you can use it for practice. Before we get started, let's first check the overall architecture of the model we will be learning today. So the model, overall model architecture is illustrated as on in this screen and we are going to use two stacked LSTM layers to extract features from facial muscles and the corresponding speech then we are going to fuse them followed by the fully connected layer for final prediction and by through the back propagation and it's gonna draw the learned features towards the the same uh, towards the corresponding emotion through cross entropy loss function by minimizing this loss function. So the um the smaller the value is, the closer the learned feature is to the true um to the corresponding true emotion. So it, um the emotion belongs to one of the categories of um, angry, sad, happy, calm, fearful, surprise, and disgust. And through um, this multimodal learning, by um, learning, by fusing the extracted features from speech and facial expressions, we are gonna um, create a model that recognizes the true emotion. So um let's get started and this link um i'm gonna put it in down this um, down below this video and first we need data and the aumfccs the pickle file contains the facial expressions and the speech features and the action units are the movements of Facial muscles and MFCCS is the extracted features from speech. So if you click this file and you can download by clicking this button. So um, let's go to the downloaded file and here in the downloads we've got this file. And if you go to your Google email, if you are logged in, and if you click Google Apps, and you can go to Drive. And here, um, let's create a folder, new, new folder, multi model um, fusion. And you can actually choose whatever name you um, want and here on a folder is created and let's click this and here uh, we are gonna draw this and upload this file to this folder and it's up and now we are going to create uh, um, a Jupyter notebook and it's um, you can see Google Collaboratory but if it's your first time, then you can click this Connect More Apps. And if you type Google Collab, and um, you can see Collaboratory. And if you click this, then you can install. However, it's already installed in my um, in mine. So um, let's go back to where we were and here we are going to create a 
new notebook and you can right click your mouse and go to more and select Google Collaboratory and um, now it's up and let's choose the file name as um, maybe multi model um, sentiment analysis and now um, um, first we need to load the drive um, let's go to the um, the github link and if you go back um, if you go back to this folder then if you click this Google Cloud folder I have already created um, the program and it's gonna run fine if you um, run it and if you go down and before we um, mount the drive, um, I'm gonna start from um, loading the data. So here's the function to find preprocess, and you can just copy this. And what it does is that it just loads the um, pickle file. So copy that and put it here so if you go up so um, you press shift and enter so if you press shift enter and it's gonna run this cell and once it's done um, go back to um, the file and if you go down folder and we are gonna code from the main function and um, you don't have to actually have main function so we'll just start from um, the um, device torch.coda that is available and data path here and labels so let's first extract the data and the labels so ctrl c copy and down here paste ctrl v and shift and enter and data pass not fine so our data pass is gonna be um, let's find it here data Pass and R um, here means that the designate directory the path is gonna be as it is written here and um, as uh, if you remember we have uploaded our file um, in the drive see you can see it here and this one, um, to find this, you can go back to your notebook and you click this one, files button. And actually, you should see my drive. And to see my drive, you should um, unload um, your Google Drive, mount, and the command for that, if you go up here, you can see mount um, function drive the mount from google.collab import the drive drive the mount and control c and go to the notebook and let's go up and you can see plus code click this and let's copy this sentence here same mount and shift enter and click connect to google drive and click and down scroll down allow 
and um, let's wait a sec and once it's done um, it, now it's done and let's click this pause folder again and click again okay. then you'll see drive folder here and click this button and go to my drive and we are in the um the AU MFCS pickle file we saved it in multimodal vision folder click and you can see the file here AU MFCC the pickle and click this button and click copy path and if you copy it you can go down scroll down again and here you can assign this path to the variable data path now it's the path uh, where the AU MFCC the pickle file is and if you pass it to this preprocess function then it's gonna return um, however the, the data uh, it's gonna return data and labels but before that we need to import pickle so let's import all the um, necessary um, APIs and first so go here and let's copy um, copy this and control C and let's go up and click post code and let's declare all the imports here and shift enter and go down again and let's shift enter so 1440 and somewhere here 1440 I think there is a print so print length AUMFCC there are um, 1440 data so let's um, delete this and let's check the shape of data the shape and labels the shape and the data shape is 294 and up to 35 it is the action units and the rest of the um, units are the page features and first we need what we need to is that we need to split this data into split data into train validation and test the set so we are gonna use the train set to train our model and validation set to evaluate our model and test set to evaluate uh, our final model so let's go back to lab and down and here um, we can see um, new labels and let's copy from here to to down to here so it's gonna split test data the whole data into test data train data and um, development data which is the validation data and copy and go to um, here and let's copy paste and if you um, select these lines and shift tab and it's gonna remove the tab and shift tab again so you can do it by pressing shift tab on your keyboard um so yeah um let's run this 
and see the train the data shape development data the shape as data the shape enter so we've got 1020 um, train data and 240 development data and 180 for test data set so um, now what we'll do we are gonna fetch the train data uh, by the batch size so we are gonna set the batch size so that we uh, don't pass all this data for training we are gonna um, take a small uh, portion of this whole data for um, for training process so let's um go back to this and before we declare the model what we'll do um if you go down you can see optimizer criterion and what it, what this optimizer does is that um, as you have seen earlier it's gonna uh, it's a function that determines that um draw that trains your model to be to predict features similar to the true answer true emotion so in this case um batch size let's set this batch size to 60 and number total length train data best loss um so actually we are gonna start from here Apple for each apple we are gonna uh, train for 50 epochs so let's try for e in range um, 50 and let's go to um, here and data so Let's um, patch data um, and the label. So, Ctrl C and go to here and paste. So, the train data. Um, let's set the batch size to sixty and. Instead of um, the constant, let's use the variable batch size. Um, now um, we needed to split the action units from the MFCCS. Uh, if you go here, then um, you can see models are zero grad. Data. Um, so here we expand the dimensions and we modify this shape um, to to part to fit it to the team layer. So we are actually um, making it to the available, changing it to the um, to the to the format that the LSTM um, input input shape that the LSTM accepts and what it'll do is gonna um, add another uh, axis in the front so let's copy this and paste here so if we check data shape before we expand the dimension um, as we have seen, it's 10, 20, comma 294. So it's gonna be, the shape is gonna be 10, 20. Um, actually, because the batch size is 60, we batch only 60. So it's gonna be 60 by 294. And if you expand the dimension, data is MP, the expand dimensions data at axis 0. And it's gonna be one by sixty by two nine four and check the shape print data shape 
and let's also here to stop from at this line. So you can see zero two nine four. Um, and one zero two nine four and actually it should be sixty um let's try to uh, change it to sixty Um, let's go up and let's check train data shape again. Um, let's go back to the cool laboratory. Um, so actually, I have made a mistake here. Um, the I here in the apple, um, we fetch the batch size for each apple, so we need to add this line. So control C and go back to uh, collab. And what's gone wrong is that uh, here, um, let's go down, let's add this bit. Um and tap press tap and length train data to batch size and let's um, change it to batch size. Uh, so. Before we didn't declare i, so now this time because we have declared the value i, so it's gonna fetch as much as the batch size, and the i index is gonna increase. So now it's sixty two nine four and once. Comma one by sixty by two nine four. After expanding the dimension, axis at zero. So, um, now we are going to split to split the whole data into A action units and the MFCCS. Go to call laboratory and. Here you copy these two lines. Um, remove this line and paste. And action units. Um, what you need to do touch that from numpy data colon comma colon comma colon thirty five dot plot. So. From the extracted um, data, you up to thirty five um, elements dimension, then it corresponds to the action units, and from thirty five um, to up to the and um, from thirty five on, the rest of them belongs to the MFCC S features. So print. Let's check the shape au dot shape mfccs dot shape and remove this and check the enter. It's one by sixty by thirty five and one by sixty five two nine two five nine. So if you add the thirty five foot and 259 is gonna be 294 so the which is the original shape of the train data so um, next we are gonna fix
fit both features to our um, model individually and if you go back now um, what we need to do is that we need to declare but before that we actually have to um, assign the label as well so copy this so and see the the label y is coach dot from numpy of label dot float and if you see label y and let's stay up to 10 so the label is one hot encoded so um this one this is the tree motion and there are one two three four five six seven eight and there are any emotions and what the train the model is gonna output is the probability for each emotion maybe 0.2 0.1 0.15 0.21 0.6 something something and if this value is 0.9 then the output unit the predicted unit is is gonna correspond to um, this emotion so they are ordered in alphabetical order order so if you see the list of the emotion um angry a b c maybe d e f the next is calm maybe angry calm so it's gonna be probably angry calm so this one this vector is corresponds to um calm emotion and the last one um this one the second last one this vector corresponds to maybe um let's see again a b c angry calm c d e f D E F G H I uh, angry said uh, if you if you order it alphabetically angry um angry come said happy said happy Said happy, calm, fearful, surprise, disgust, fear, surprise, disgust. So A, B, C, D, B, C, D, E, F, G, F, F, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, H, H I J K and M L A B C this this cost should come uh, ahead C D angry A B C D E F G H I J K and M L P Q R S so angry calm disgust fear happy surprise one two three four five six um uh, and here set this cost one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven um in love this there are eight emotions and actually there is neutral i guess so a b c d e f g h i j k a, p q and p q r a, a b c d e f here H I J K M M N O P Q R S T E F G H here happy A B C D E F G H I J K M N O P Q R S Z Z surprise so angry calm disgust fear happy neutral sad surprise 
So this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's gonna be sad emotion. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Happy, maybe. Um, this is gonna correspond to happy first. This is angry. And one, two, three, four. Here, where one is marked is at fourth position. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four. Fear of emotion. So the model is gonna um detect one of these emotions. And now what we'll do is uh, if we go back to here, uh, we need to change the uh, change it to the tensor. Actually, um, you you connect to the GPU machine for calculating these vectors. So copy these two lines. And enter and paste it here. The action units um, and mfccs is mfccs dot cuda and shift enter. And what it says. Um, it gives us the error, runtime error, found no NVIDIA driver on your system. Please check that you have an NVIDIA GPU and install the driver from. So this Google Collab uh, um, provides NVIDIA GPU. So what this statement um, is, is that what it, this statement does is that it's going to use NVIDIA GPU. So we need to first check whether the device is available. So touch device is touch that um let, actually let's check touch the CUDA that is available. Um here you need parenthesis. Um let's go Back and here we can see the command touch that put that is available to so touch that the is a uh, here was a spelling mistake available and it's false and to use it so now it's not actually currently it's not um connected. Um, let's close this. So to connect, we should um, click this runtime, and down here you can see change runtime type. And hardware accelerator, let's click this, OK, save, and if you run it again. Um, torch not defined um, because the runtime is changing. We need to run um, run again. So from here, shift enter. Connect to Google Drive. Hello. And run, 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 run. Um, wait a sec. Um, you can see now it returns true. So we can now use the NVIDIA GPU. So if you run this, it doesn't give the error and runs fine. And it's gonna only give us the assertion error down here. We we have um, thrown the in interrupt. So go up and click this again. And next, what we need to do, um, we also need to connect this label to the um, GPU. 
for a calculation and y is y dot CUDA and um, we need to define the length to use it um, for our LSTM layer so the length um, long tensor and let's paste and paste here so length is watch the long tensor of au dot shape o so if you remember the action unit shape was of um one by edge size by um the length of action units which was five and this one you gonna take the expanded dimension and you multiply it as much as the size of the batch size so it's gonna be a one 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 and there are 60 ones so check the length So here is the length um, tensor. So go up, print length. So length is, um, you can say length. And there are 60 ones in a list, uh, long in Tochi long tensor. And next, we let, um, now we are going to create our um, model that views the um, two distinct features of action units and the speech features. And let's click this tab again and let's um, name it as views the features and we are gonna store our returned views the feature to this variable. And the model is going to um, learn the features from the action units and MFCCS and with the length variable and it's gonna fuse both learned features. So copy this, Jersey, and back again. These features is model AU comma mfcss comma length and we need to declare this model um so let's go up and let's define the model in another section cell above so it's gonna be uh, let's go up and here we've got the class mmf model so to declare your um, model, so you need um, the init, init function and for the function. So class the format you just follow this um, mmf model multi model fusion model. You uh, here you write module and then dot module and then define init of um, and go back again super so mmf model comma sub dot init Cool. So up to here, uh, you just follow this um, format and that in it, um, actually we had self self that in it, and now what we'll do, um. 
we are going to do declare au um, rnn and mfccs rnn and define all the function stuff and we need two parameters one action units and another one that receives mfccs and another one that receives ranks and let's write pass so if you call this uh, model what you what um it first initialized in the what's declared in this init function so to check it let's write print i'm i'm in init and once done then it's gonna go to forward to process your um your layers so um print i'm in in forward so um you to find mm model um let's assign it in another so uh, section so let's go here model is mmf model and you need to um, connect it to gpu as well and you declare model here and if you go down you call this model and as i have said earlier the init function executes first and then goes to for the function. So if you run this um, MMF model, you must define. So if you go up, so let's shift enter and shift enter again. So as you can see, it says um, I'm in forward. And if you go up, here you can see I'm in init. So I mean init init function first executes and then goes to I mean port. So let's go up and let's remove um, these things. Print length. Um, let's remove the print statements that are not necessary anymore. And center again. And you see I mean init and I mean port. And uh, let's go to, if you go to, um, so let's write sharp to do. And after we um, extract the fused features, so what we'll do is that we are gonna um, backpropagate, backpropagate, which is uh, with updating process that makes the fused feature um, more closer to the um, true label and if you go to MMF model say if you remember init function here print statement I mean in it first executed and then to forward I mean forward so let's declare RNN um, RNN layer. So um, let's declare AU RNN first. So um, uh, let, let's go to the here. So RNN is NN.LSTM, and there are various types of um, RNN, and one of them. Um, uh, mm, one of the most widely used is LSTM layer. So we are gonna use LSTM layer here. So let's assign RNN with NN.LSTM. So go here, RNN is NN.LSTM. And now what we'll do is um, I will declare action unit RNN self self dot 
um, AU RNN one. Um, we're gonna declare two AU RNN for action units because, as I have said earlier, we are gonna use two stacked elastin. So as we have seen in this picture, um, we are declaring action unit RNN for to extract features from facial expressions. So go back. AU RNN one is um. If you go here, RNN thirty five comma sixteen comma um, and then we use bidirectional LSTM to learn features from past as well as from the future. Control C, paste, copy, and paste here RNN. And what this means is thirty five. This is thirty five because the input unit. The number of input units is 35. Um, and then 16. Um, this number of units times 4 is gonna be the output units uh, after the second LSTM layer. And let's declare self that AU RNN2 RNN. And it's gonna be the input units after learning the first layer. It's gonna double the output units, so it's gonna be two times sixteen. And now, um, the output unit. Um, let's take. Um, you can define it with sixteen. And bidirectional is true. And in for the function. Um, let's go to this tab again and here we have extracted the AU and call the self that extract AU with the AU comma length and if you go up extract if you look at extract AU it looks as uh, you can see here so um Let's just let's copy all these lines. So what we'll do, um, copy this, and come here again, and in for the function, let's first write um, statements that learn the action units. So run action units is LSTM. And let's align these spaces. Pack sequence is pack padded sequence. A U comma length. And if you see, uh, let's check the action unit shape again. Print A U shape. A U the shape. Assert false. Um, shift enter and it's gonna show up here down here because where it's where we are calling the model and if you see here AU shape is 1 by 60 by 35 and let's go up again and this action unit is going to um, go through the edit sequence and the output packed sequence is gonna go into this RNN one. So what we do here is that we are um adding, we are changing it to the format that to fit it to the first RNN. So self dot AU RNN one call this function and it's gonna return first hidden layer packed H one comma final H one comma underscore. And you call pad packed sequence and you is packed h1 and it's gonna return padded h1 and then pack the non h1 pack you again call pack padded sequence and you pass this padded h1 from pad packed sequence with 
length um, uh, that we have declared earlier, and then what it's gonna return is back norm the h1, um, and you pass this to second stem layer pack norm the h1 rn2, and it's gonna return the final hidden layer. And what you do, because you select this um, hidden layer 1 and hidden layer 2, and the extracted AU is gonna be the um, 4 times the 16. So, um, shop here, and if you check the shape, um, let's remove this pass. And if you check print extracted AU dot shape third um finish here. Uh and let's shift enter shift enter. And as you can see the shape is two by sixty by thirty two. And let's go up. And because this is 60 is um, the batch size, so if you go up, so we are going to permute. So permute one, so batch size 60 goes to the first axis, and uh, two goes to the second axis, and two at position two, the earlier um, is as it is, and if you See um, the shape if you do permute and one after you do permute, then it's gonna be 60 by 2 by um, which, what was it? So at index at axis 2, it was 32, so 32 stays as it is 32. So if you run again. So now it's 62 by 2 by 32. And if you go up, and what we are going to do, um, call contiguous function and view. What view does is that um, you make it, you fix the batch size, and you change the shape by multiplying this. And you shape it to how it can be shaped with batch size fixed here. So it's gonna be 2 times 32. So it's gonna be um, 60 by 64. So run, run again. And you can see 60 by 64. So let's go up. Again, okay. now what this is is the extracted action units. So, this is the learned action unit features. So, this one contains the features that describe the movements of facial muscles while you are speaking. And then let's um, make it wrap it as a function. So, we'll name it as define. Extract AUs self and um, you need a self because uh, it's just a format and the parameter um, the argument receives starts from um, from the second position AU comma and you need length variable colon and you copy these lines and paste it here and align this with tab and then you finally return the extracted AU so once you have declared this with you 
expected AU and if you pull just this function and when you call the um, inner declared function then you put um, self ahead the function name so self extracted you um, let's name it as extracted AU the variable that's gonna store the extracted action units is self dot extract AUs AU and length shift enter shift enter so extracted AU it has 60 by 64 so now we have the learned action units second what we'll do is that we are going to learn the features from speech which is the MFCCS which is the learned MFCCS features um, um, so if you go up um, so MFCCS is um, short for math frequency sexual equations and um, in my earlier video I um, uploaded a video that explains about some basics of signal processing and usually you um, you apply free transform because it is easier to analyze the um, speech signal in terms of frequency um, and further you apply MFCCS when you um, analyze speech um, so actually uh, most of audio signals free transform is enough but you apply MFCCS because it um, use uh, another kind of unit called speech because that um, that kind of um, extract it analyzed the signal within a range um, because there is a boundary that humans can hear the frequency so um, upper limit um, upper uh, certain frequency humans cannot um, hear um, the uh, audio signal so um, you can just understand it like that for now and so um, actually what's um, important what we are gonna learn here is that we are learning how to fuse multimodal signals so um, so we can just focus on that um, so um, let's go to so the learning the speech signal so this is the same as we have learned the action units so next we are going to learn um, the uh, um, MFCCS features so it's the same so if you can just copy this and paste it down here and now this time um, you should use MFCCS RNN1 as declared above. So if you go here, let's declare um, set that MFCCS RNN1 is RNN. And this time the input feature should be, um, let's go down. Um, MFCCS, let's, let's check the shape of MFCCS, MFCCS shape. MFCCS, the shape, assert, false. So MFCCS shape is um, 1 by 60 by 259. So the input unit is 259 for MFCCS. So let's copy this. And go up. It's two fifty nine, and the output units. Let's set it same sixteen, and by bi bidirectional. True. Left the MFCCS RNN two is RNN sixteen. Um, two times the sixteen. And 
16 and bidirectional bidirectional is true and go down so let's fix these lines to um to suit it for um to make it right for mf rnn mf CSS rnn pack sequence is pack had a sequence this time you feed mf CSS instead of action units comma length pack the h1 comma final h1 comma underscore is self dot au rnn1 instead we all mf CSS rnn1 Pack the sequence and next line padded h1 comma underscore pad pack the sequence or pack the h1 and next pack nomed h1 is pack padded sequence of padded h1 comma length underscore comma final h2 comma underscore is set that um, MFCCS RNN2 of pack nomed H1 extracted um, MFCCS coach that had um, you concatenate final H1 the first up unit from LSTM layer and the second unit from LSTM layer and at the dimension 2 so um, this is the same as we have seen and if you see the um, Extracted MFCCS shape. Extracted MFCCS shift enter, shift enter. So MFCCS shape, 1 by 60 um, actually go up. So it uh, is stopped here because of the interrupt here. So remove this line. And again, and if you go, if you see here, extracted MFCCS is 60 by 64. So we next we are going to fuse um, these two um, learned features. So copy these lines and define check MFCCS that MFCCS length and paste here and align the spaces um, uh, now uh, return extracted mfccs and now what we'll do is that we'll call um, extracted AU, extracted AUs, that, that extract AUs, AU, um, extracted AU is that, that extract AUs. What's the function name? Extract AUs? Yep, yeah. so go down and length. Extracted MFCCS is stuff that extract um, MFCCS, MFCCS, comma length the so print extracted um, um, AUs, A AU. Extracted AUs that shape and MFCCS extracted MFCCS that shape enter shift enter and AU shape 60 by 64 MFCCS 60 by 64 now we are gonna fuse this and then it's gonna be 60 by one um 128 because 64 times 2 is 128. So if you go up, 
we are gonna fuse and how we are gonna fuse we are gonna use this function so fused features it's gonna be touch the cat extracted au comma extracted mfcs comma um because if you go down what how we are gonna fuse we um we, this one is gonna stay here and you fuse this 64 and 64 so um actually uh how how it's being fused is that i'll let i'll draw it so if you here are one two six one two three and let's assume that it's um here are 60 of them 60 of them au and one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let, let's also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And here same. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is AU and MFCCS. Learn the MFCCS feature. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And if you um, fuse this, how it's gonna be is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And this here, and this one here. One, two, six, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same here. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's gonna be um sixteen of five of sixteen five by sixteen. So um if you um mm, uh so if you fuse this it's gonna be 60 by 128 same as um the process we have seen before and um so if you go up um what we'll do at dimension equal one and let's print use the features F in MFCS M MF model um. <coughs> uh, <coughs> go up and um, let me drink the water uh, for a sec. So, um, from, um, use the pictures, uh, let's check the shape. Um, here's spelling mistake. Uh, F in MMF model is 60 by 128. This is so. This is the fused features of the of both learned features of action units and MFCCS. And let's go up and finally. We need to learn and um, we need to return this fused features. Return fused features. Enter. Um, 
and uh, now here so we uh, next we will do um, from this extracted views feature from this views feature we are going to learn train our model um, uh, let's check uh, the shape whether it's um, returned properly used features shape uh, 60 um, by 120 uh, in Apple um, that the line is here in Apple, touch the size 60 by 120. So uh, to to train, we need to declare um, declare the optimizer first. So how we do? Um, come down, and you can see the optimizer here. And we are gonna use Adam optimizer. Copy this and um, let's paste it above before we go into this epoch loop um, up here before we declare our model optimizer is opm the adam of filter lambda p and lambda p the request card comma model the parameters uh, read the learning rate one e minus three and um, actually after we have declared the model so um after um we call this model dot train here model dot train and come to here and we also we are going to use a cross entropy function criterion is and then the cross entropy loss and then the cross entropy loss and total number of um, train data. Uh, actually, uh, we just wrote it down here as length of train data. And um, so loss backward optimizer the step. And if you go here, so um. Down here, so what we'll do is that we are going to um, learn this function with the cross entropy loss function. Um, so if you look at um, here, what we'll do now is cross entropy function. The this is the use the feature after downsampling, and the you check it with uh, um, whether it is. Um, whether it equals it is equal to the true emotion. Um, but as we have seen, it's one twenty eight, and we need to um downsample it to eight um eight units because then we can return the probabilities for each emotion. So before we do um. We call cross entry function. Um, um, actually, uh, let's first write right um, let's call this loss function first and let's see what's going wrong and let's um, fix it from there. The criterion of um, loss. Loss is criterion and pass views to features. And why is the, um, if you see why, as you have seen earlier, this is the true um, one uh, encoded emotion. Um, here, incomplete. Uh, let's take comment and run again. And see, uh, you can see why. Here, why is the one encoded emotion? 
Um, so you uh, pass y to the cross entropy function um, where has it gone um, criterion um, yep here let's uncomment this loss is criterion fields picture and y and let's print loss And here it says runtime error zero d or one dimension target tensor expected multi target not supported. So what it says is that we should downsample this field feature so uh, to the same dimension of the true label, the um the to the to the same dimension of the label dimension. So because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Categories go up and and if we go to MMF model, let's in this init function, let's declare fully connected layer self that FPT and then the um, linear in pictures. Um, it's if you go to here fuse the picture. It was um, 120. Um, let's go up and let's check. Uh, let's go up and let's check again. Print. Used. Used pictures. Shape. Um, remove unnecessary lines. Um, um, anyhow, um, let's go up. The fused feature dimension is 128. So if you uh, let's go up and use the feature because fused feature the dimension is one input output unit is 128. So in pictures is 120 and we are gonna downsample it to 8. What well, our features should be 8 and and we are going to pull this fully connected layer um, go down in the board function after extracting fused features let's name it as O output um, let's output is stuff the FC views pictures now it's gonna be um, 60 by 8. Ship, um, run, run. Um, I'll go up, and what we have returned is um, not output, we will return output. Um, Fix it and run, run. Now it's running fine. And if you um, let's stop, um, stop and let's print the shape. F views with first the shape. Third, false. See, it's uh, 60 by 8. And um, before we have downsampled, if you go up, it was 128. Go up here, what is what the statement is um, giving from? Um, where the earlier statement was given from is from here for the function. Remove this. And because you passed it to this fully connected layer, so 120 input dimension is reduced to eight dimensions. And go down. Um, now, um, here we need to call um, model that zero grass. And then what we need to do is that. Um, 
we need to uh, train and um, the back propagation is done with optimizer dot and and then um, we lost the backward and lost the backward. This is, this does the back propagation and backward um enter. Uh, let's go up now. Uh, let's remove these lines and let's print uh train loss and print print train validation test loss and accuracy uh, let's go a bit um Let's go up. Okay. Um. Let's go down. Uh. To print, we will use the eval function. Um. Go up. Um. So this eval function, I have to find, and what it does is that it calculates how many correct answers it has predicted. Um. And um, you can check this code for the detail. And let's just use it um, as, um, for the time sake. Um, code and paste here. And what it's going to return evaluation logs and the accuracy. And if you go up by um, receiving the data and the corresponding labels and come uh, and then let's um, print so um, you come out of the inner batch loop so if you go up here you um you go through the back propagation for each batch size and when you print out the train loss you print it for um for each epoch so here the back propagation um for for one epoch is finished and and once trained let's check the train loss and the Validation loss, so train loss, my validation loss is eval. Um, train data, validation, um, train data, train data, and train labels, print. Train loss um, the format train loss validation loss um, let's check the eval function eval uh, mode, um, I've got mode here, so mode uh, eval text, no keyword arguments. Um, uh, let's train, um, let's check it again. Train loss. Train accuracy eval train data comma train labels comma board. Uh, uh, let's just copy this.
Um, maybe the eval function not um, have I not um, find it, run it. So let's run run again. So actually, the uh, error earlier um, happened because I haven't um, run the newly declared eval function. So let's remove unnecessary print statements to make it the output clear. Um, not sure where this um, the f is coming from. So I I gotta run from here from this class. I think the um, run statement from last time is still um, residing. So train loss. You see if uh, the model is being trained properly, then the loss it should decrease. Um, uh, as it goes through the epochs, and the higher the loss is that the predicted um values is uh, far from further from the true answer, and the closer to the um the smaller the loss value means signifies that the predicted value from the model is closer to the true emotion so um train loss and let's pull this time um evaluation validation loss well validation loss well um, it, sh it should be train, train loss and train accuracy, train accuracy, and validation loss, validation accuracy, eval train data, train labels, mode, um, it's validation. Um, shift, um, train loss. And let's print out train accuracy F um valid train loss train train accuracy one hundred times and here percent and let's print out validation loss. Validation loss, train accuracy, um, validation accuracy, train validation loss, 100 times, validation accuracy, uh, run. So let's check our multimodal fusion model, how well it's doing. And uh, if you see the result from the um top um let's print out epoch as well let's go up print out um e um So this F statement um, ahead of this um, apostrophe, it says that the variable within this um, uh, in this braces represents the value from the variable. It doesn't um, take it as a string, as in Apple or these things. So run again. So if you go up, um, epoch zero. Um, let's let's um, e plus one to make it nicer. Uh, let's uh, check the result and let's see the our training process how it's going. And train loss at epoch one is zero point oh two uh two point oh three seven. And both train accuracy and validation accuracy is pretty much the same, 30%, 40%.
epoch 3, epoch 4, and as the epoch goes on, both the train accuracy and the validation accuracy is going up. And let's go uh, further and um, until Apple um, 24 and 26, 74, accuracy 74. And let's go up and about like from um, Apple 36 on, it starts to saturate. Stay says train accuracy 70, validation accuracy 70. And if you go further, um, you can see that the train accuracy is 82 and 82.82.45 and train loss it gets um, smaller 0.504, validation loss 0.504. Um, um, let's um, go up. Um, actually, we have passed wrong evaluation validation data. You should pass so validation data and validation labels. So because the data was same, it returned the same accuracy. So usually validation data, the accuracy is lower than the train um, accuracy because the model is trained on the train accuracy. So as it it trains. The updates is predictions based on the train data because it keeps seeing the same data. It recognizes um, it gets higher and higher as the process goes on. But validation data is lower than the um, train data. Prediction is lower because the model sees the validation data. Um, the model is not trained on the validation data. So um it is lower the accuracy is lower than the what is predicted on the train data so we should use um validation loss as our guidance because um in the real world um we are not going to test our model on our um data set but new data set so the loss the model should be trained um towards the data distribution that represents um, real world, which means that uh, guided by the data set that the model has not seen. Um, so anyhow, um, let's um, this time, let's um, increase this epoch. Um, so um, the number of epochs, how many number of epochs is appropriate? Actually, um, it depends, but um, you can, one criteria is that you can use all this topping. Um, and I've got all this topping video. Um, you can check it and anyhow, uh, let's see how the process goes. Um, validation data, I named it as development data. Development labels. So train accuracy, um, epoch 13, 27. And if you see here, epoch 85, epoch, um, if you, uh, let's check the last epoch. Um, at epoch 100, the train accuracy almost reaches 92.94. And validation loss, 81.67. So um, the model performance is not um, it's quite good 80% accuracy and um, for your model um, train accuracy um, usually it's gonna saturate to 100% um, because it is trained uh, it's predicting the same data uh, validation data um, it just provides the guidance and um, not the hyperparameters doesn't um, affect, but um, however, um, because the model is guided by the validation accuracy to um, to to give your final um, 
the uh, to give a performance measure for your final model, you should use test data set, which is split from validation data. Otherwise, um, it uh, the data leakage happens, which means that um, that the model is trained on the information that the uh, that cannot the that the model cannot know. Um, uh, and, and I hope that I have a um, chance to explain better about the data leakage and all this topping and how to set your hyperparameters like this, the number of epochs and the batch size or um, moreover, um, maybe um, the optimizer and um, yeah, and actually um, um, today I've um showing you how to fuse your multimodal signals so if you go up let's look at um the code lines together with the picture so here lstm so so what's happening here um Extract AU is the set that extract AU's AU comma length. What it does is that it's, it, this part it, it it's doing this part. Um, no, actually, because this is external, it's it, this part facial expressions. So this line is um extracting, is performing this part, and extracting facial expressions. Features and this part extracted the MFCCS. Um, self dot extract MFCCS is performing this part extracting speech features and views the features. Coach dot cat extracted the AU comma extracted the MFCCS. This li line is performing this process fusion process. And self the FOC output is self the FOC of fused features is performing um, this part down sampling and cross entropy is happening at um, um before that remember that note that it is down sampled to A because the number of emotion categories eight is eight and here a neutral is omitted so one two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, plus neutral is 8. And go to this loss function. Cross entropy criterion is declared with, um, if you go, if you find criterion, and then the cross entropy loss, and loss is calculated um, with fused features. This is the fused features and the y the true emotion and by um guiding the model that minimize the loss the predicted um, features the predictions gets closer to the true emotion um, so if it was happy and the predicted distribution um is being guided to be closer to the happy emotion by guiding the loss towards the minimum loss um so these the features is the output from the, this model so um up to here um this is the end of my video and i hope that it has helped you who um who who knew to do multimodal sentiment analysis and um, help you with the hot views, how to implement um, multimodal sentiment analysis and how to fuse multimodal signals. And thanks for listening. Um, goodbye.